I'm gonna love you. Hey everyone, welcome back to Dan's Chess Lounge. Today we have round 7 of the Tradewise Gibraltar Masters. Hikaru Nakamura faced off against Mikhail Antipov. He's a Russian Grandmaster, young kid, he's only like 20 or 21 years old. Uh, a very attacking player, an aggressive player. So in this game here you would have two very aggressive players facing off against each other. So I was looking for a very exciting game here. Normally, Antipov is a Sicilian expert, but today he chose to play the French defense, as you see on the board here. Now, Hikaru played the Tarash defense, which is a, the trickiest French to play against nowadays because uh, it doesn't expose White to some of the weaknesses that the classical does, um, and it, it gives you more chances to win than, of course, the, the exchange French defense. So the Tarash defense is where it's at nowadays. Uh, the problem with the classical defense where the knight goes to c3 is that black can play the winner where the bishop goes to b4 and pins the knight. Well, that causes problems because a lot of times white's pawn structure gets destroyed and uh, it turns out being a, a very difficult end game if the queens can come off the board. And then uh, you also have uh, an easier way for white to defend the d-pawn in the Tarash. He can just play c3 uh, after white plays c c5 to attack the center. So the Tarash is really the best way nowadays that, that players are, are choosing to play against the French defense. So you have c5 here striking towards the center as I was just saying before. Um, Black's idea here is to try to wipe out the, the white pawns in the center. You have E takes D. Now Queen takes. Uh, e takes D used to be the main move uh, in this line, but now it's more more common that players are playing Queen takes. Knight G F3. C takes D. Now it looks like white is dropping a pawn here. But he's going to get that pawn back because he has a lot of pieces that can attack that D pawn. And don't forget his queen is in the center of the board. It's going, it's about to get attacked and moved around. So white is going to be able to develop with tempo. As you see here, bishop c4 hits the queen. Queen drops back. Castles. Knight f6. And now you have knight b3 and i just want to say going back one move here it's not like black could try to protect his pawn with e5 here because then you would just have the knight takes and once the queen takes then you have the rook on e1 here and then that would pin the queen the rook would pin the queen to the king here so that's why black went ahead and just played knight f6 here, developing his pieces. White plays knight b3. Now you have three attackers on that pawn. So white's going to get his pawn back. Knight c6. White grabs his pawn back. Now you have an exchange of knights. a6. White's idea here, if you look at black's bishop right here, it's not that good. It's terrible, actually. It's blocked in with the e6 pawn. It's blocked in with the b7 pawn. So a6, the idea behind that is is for black wants to expand on the queen side here. He wants to play like a, a b5 and then put his bishop on b7. And then his bishop will be beautiful then if he could do that. The bishop drops back to b3. Queen gets on a... A better square there, c7. And now you have queen f3 by Hikaru, which is like a prophylaxis move. Uh, it stops the idea that I was just mentioning before. Uh, now black cannot play b5 right now and expand on the queen side and put his bishop on b7 because the queen 
is stopping that by being on that diagonal. So now black's light square bishop is just truly bad for the moment, just temporarily. Now you have bishop d6 hitting the pawn on h2. So Nakamura plays h3. And Antipov goes ahead and plays bishop h2 as well. Um, just moving the king out the way, just putting the king on a, on a, uh, separating his king basically from his, his cover, his pawn on, uh, the f2, f2 square. Just trying to create, uh, a slight weakness there by putting, displacing his king. So then he goes back to e4, e5 now. Um, they call that a disappearing move. That bishop to h2 check and then just dropping back there. They call that a disappearing move because he, the idea wasn't to really do anything but to move, uh, his opponent into a different position, kind of, kind of push him into a different position. So bishop e5 here, c3 protects the knight. Now black is developing that that bad light square bishop, bishop d7, rook e1, castles, bishop g5. So now at this point here, the opening's over. Now we're going into the middle game. Both players have their pieces out and developed. Now they're going to try to work on a middle game strategy. h6, bishop drops back. Now you have an exchange in the middle here. White has the isolated queen pawn after that. That's just a slight weakness there in the pawn structure. Uh, if the queens come off the board and the pieces get traded down, that's something that black can try to capitalize on uh, because that is, a, that is a weakness in the end game. If it's just a, queen, a king and pawn end game, uh, the person with the isolated Pawn, Queen's Pawn is going to be at a disadvantage because it's tougher for the king to cover all the pawn islands. Now you have Bishop C6 hitting the queen. Queen goes to E3. Knight is on a good square there, blockading the isolated Queen's Pawn. You know, Aaron Nimzovic told us that knights, they belong in front of the, uh, the isolated pawns. Those are the best blockading pieces the knights are. Queen e5, queen d7. He said no queen trades for me right now. And also the idea behind this here is to go bishop a4, uh, trading pieces. That's just following good chess principles and chess fundamentals. Uh, he's fo Antipov is following that. When your opponent has an isolated pawn, especially the isolated queen's pawn, Go ahead and trade pieces down, get to a king and pawn end game, and then you'll have a uh, an advantage in the end game. So a3 is played uh, for if Nakamura is faced with that move, bishop a4, then he can tuck the bishop back on a2 if he chooses. Rook c8. Now you have f3 here. Uh, Nakamura could put the bishop on f2. If it looks like black is going to start trying to beat up on that uh, isolated D pawn. Now you have that bishop a4 move that black has been threatening. Now Nakamura decides to exchange pieces right here. Because with that bishop a4 move, black's pawn is going to be isolated now. No matter how he captures. If he captures it with the queen, then you have queen takes queen. And then e takes queen. So then giving you given an isolated pawn as well. So no matter how black captures here, he's also going to have an isolated pawn on, on, on the d file. Now you have an offer of queen trades. Rook f e8. Queens are swapped off the board. Rooks come off. Rooks come off. And now you have the opposite color bishops. And this game here is pretty much drawn at this point. Uh, they exchange pieces and there's really nothing to play for here with the opposite color bishops. It's, it's, uh, easily a drawn game. They play a few more moves here 
and then they, they agree to a draw. So, in this game here, it was a little bit anticlimactic, considering that both players are very aggressive tacticians. Uh, you would have thought that it would have been more of a, an exciting uh, knockdown, drag out, tactical battle. But you don't get that every time. You know, you, you get what what's on the board. You play the positions on the board, and that's what we got today. So, so with that draw, David Howe catches up to Nakamura because he won today. So both players are tied. We have a two-way tie for first place. David Howe and Hikaru Nakamura, they both have six points. And then there's a long list of players right behind them. It's getting juicy. It's getting good. It's only three rounds to go. Who's going to win it? Okay, folks. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and please subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in round number eight. Till next time.